Well, after a very successful career in banking and finance, David Walshaw decided it was time for a bit of a change. His new direction? Growing olives for olive oil. Now, neither he nor his wife Helen had any previous experience, but they bought some land and they started growing some trees. Their oil has gone on to win some awards, and now he has written a book all about the experience. Welcome, David. Thank you. This is quite interesting because it's, I mean, that's quite a career change. Why did you decide to do this? Well, after I was a banker, I was then a financial advisor for, and had my own business for about 13 years. And I think the pressure of that and looking after other people's money and the expectation, both from your clients, but also from yourself, to look after people's money, it's pretty important to them. Oh, so you just decided so, to blow your own on some olive trees. Oh, well, yeah, <laughs> and the markets kept changing and they're always difficult. There's, that's never um, not the case. So what, what drew you to olive oil and olive trees in the first place? Well, I think that firstly, I wanted to have an outdoor life. And when I was young, I had time on an uncle's farm. And I got used to that and thought I really liked it. But of course, you know, when you're a townie boy, you don't really get the opportunity to be a farmer. Mm. So I did the finance thing and then, you know, many years later, I had the opportunity of making a complete change. And I thought about grapes and thought about apples and all sorts of things. avocados or... Yeah, I've thought of it oh, since I've got two avocado trees now. Oh. And they're doing all right. Mm, well, yeah, there's something quite romantic about pressing your own olive oil, isn't there? Yes, there is, but we don't do our own pressing. Right. It's way too big for that now. It, and uh, we, we send our uh, olives off to a press to get pressed. So what did you know about olives, all the different varieties? Because I'm taking it, I know nothing about olives except I like to eat them. <laughs> and I use olive oil a lot. The different kinds, I mean, before we went into this venture, what did you research? Uh, I didn't know anything. And I think that was part of the point, really, <laughs> to do something that was completely different. I was about 52, I think, when I started. And I thought, well, you know, if you're going to do something and completely out there, knowing it all before you start is a bit of a waste of time, really. <laughs> a, lot of us, a lot of us are scared to take that jump, which you've clearly done. What would be your biggest piece of advice for people that are watching now that want to make that lifestyle change? Well, it's kind of trite, but I always think feel the fear and do it anyway is, oh, yeah. is so right, you know, that... At some stage in your life, you actually have to say, well, I've only got one crack at it, mm. so do it. You've got to scare yourself a little bit, don't you, just to, you know, really appreciate Oh, the yeah, thing. and it's kind of terrifying, really. <laughs> <But> you... <laughs> which makes your heart beat fast, which is exciting. Yeah, well, it does, yeah. yeah what about absolutely. Helen? Yeah, yeah. yeah well, what about Helen, your wife? She... What does she think about well, this? Well, I'm proud of her, really, because she came with me. <laughs> we moved out to Tihoro Beach, and I kind of said, oh, I really had enough of this finance world, and we've got to do something different. She said, oh, yeah, where, where are you going to live? <laughs> <laughs> and I kind of went, oh, out at the batch, you know, because we had a batch at Tihoro Beach. And then, uh, oh, we kind of talked about it, and she saw that I was serious, you know, I needed a change. And uh, so she came along, and now um, she's marketing director, and uh, right today we're just working out our program for tasting our new olive oil, and that's a big deal, you know. We have to do our blending and tasting and... Yeah, um, it's a lot of hard work, isn't it? Yeah, it, it must is. be rewarding, I guess, <laughs> at the end of the day. Yeah, um, I think I naturally work hard. I think this is a, sort of a just an ethic. You either I like that or you're not. That's and a default setting. I'm more entertained by working than probably anything else, I nice. suppose. Yeah. I, I was reading a, a little bit of your book, and you talk about tasting and, and smelling the olive oil when you're doing the blends or whatever. Yes. And you said it, it, it's was it smells like bananas? Yes, some do. I've never come across oh, that. It's quite surprising. In fact, our, one of our new oils this year, uh, Fran Toya, I was going, oh, Helen said, what's that smell? And we were sniffing up, and I thought, I can smell bananas. And sometimes you can, sometimes not. But you can smell other things like uh, tomatoes, capsicum, um, sometimes grassy smells. Uh, but the olive oil shouldn't just taste like grass, though. Right, no. so you've, you've learned a lot about olive oil, I'd say, over oh, all these oh, years. Absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> what what yeah. do your friends think of it? They were probably thinking, oh, are you crazy doing this? Yeah, you know, def- nothing and you're going to give it a shot. Oh, definitely. In fact, one of my friends said, you must be nuts. And that was the working title for the book for quite a while. You must be nuts. Yeah. That would be better if you had a macadamia farm, right? <laughs> yeah, well, that's right. That so it wasn't going to never be the title. So, so is the point of the book to sort of, you know, show how one can reinvent their life? Is that the purpose of the book? Yes. I think underneath it it was, but it didn't really come about because I wanted to tell the world how to do stuff. Right. 
It was just that I was doing presentations to different groups and they would say to me similar things you're saying really, you know, what did you know? Right. Uh, what did it take to do that? Why would you leave a, a good job? Being, being made redundant helps. <laughs> oh, <laughs> oh, yeah, we'll be there. <laughs> yeah, well, I had a couple of those along the way, so, you know, that, that kind of helps motivate you and realise actually, you know, c corporate careers, they're good as long as you're really enjoying it still. Mm. But sometimes you just get to get out there and, and you just have to do it. And do take have, a leap of faith. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Do you have regrets? Any regrets about no, this? No, none at switch? all. No. Was it tough starting out? Did you ever think um, this is the wrong choice? No, I don't think I did. I was pretty hard out. I was working and it was physical. And Hang on, let me rephrase that. Did Helen ever think it was the wrong choice? <laughs> yeah, probably. <laughs> but she's still I don't know. Here. But yeah, we've been married well, well over 40 years. So, you know, <laughs> I, I think we're kind of used to each other's foibles and we know when to uh, go along with each other I think. So I guess planting an olive tree is kind of like investing in a, in a banking system you know there's the initial start and then eventually you see something happen how long does it take between planting and then actually seeing some produce? Well um, in a couple of years the trees can surprise you and they have olives on them but you can't really harvest them um, and then in five years you're getting quite a reasonable crop hopefully if you're doing things right um, but that's only available really for hand harvesting, which is much tougher anyway. But nowadays it's huge trees and shakers and machines and all that stuff. So how many trees do you have? 2,300. So do you, you obviously don't hand, you do the shaky thing? Yeah, no, I have a, yeah, I have a machine contractor. Right. Andrew Taylor comes in and does it for me. And, uh, so it's a big business. Yeah, that's great. Well, it is. You know, we had 139 bins this year. Is wow. there more of this happening in About New Zealand? About 50 tonnes, you know, it's a lot of olives. It's a lot of olives. Yeah, yeah. And do we grow them well here? Yeah. Like yeah, we do. Yeah, the Italian judges that come over here and do our awards and that, and others from other countries go, oh, you bloody Kiwis, you know. <laughs> <laughs> How do you do this, you know? And they, I think the answer is that Kiwis always think we can do stuff. You know, you think of all the horticulturalists and Kiwi fruit growers, who turn Chinese gooseberries into kiwi fruit. Mm. Give it a shot. You know, and the fantastic grape growers, fantastic apples that get exported around the world. And kiwis do stuff. OK, one thing I'm really curious about, though, did you, know, once you, did you use the redundancy money? Did you have a little bit of cash? Oh, yeah, I needed a bit of that. Right, Yeah, okay. I've been spending it ever since. <laughs> <laughs> so, so the advice is get yourself in a financial position where you can take that risk, so you've got a bit of breathing space, give it a shot, but more importantly, pick up the book and read it. You'll learn some lessons. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I was a big fan of not having debt, and I repaid debt even though my banking colleague said, Oh, you're mad, you got this cheap finance. Yeah. But I always thought, yeah, and be beholden to corporates all your life. Mm. Do you want to really do that? Oh, and I nice. thought, okay. the only way you get choices is free yourself up. Oh, I love, love it. it. I feel the fear and do it anyway. Hey, David, thank yeah. you so much. Thank you. Pleasure talking to you. David's book, Olive Oil, The New Zealand Way, is available now from all great bookstores.